long way that Alcoa breakup is almost upon us. Tomorrow, Alcoa will officially separate into two companies, a commodity aluminum maker that will keep the Alcoa name, and a second business that makes engineered products mainly for aerospace and automobiles, which will be known as Arconic. Now, Alcoa's most recent quarter, its last as a combined company, was not as strong as analysts expected. However, once this breakup happens, I think the newly created Arconic could be a very intriguing story. My travel trust owns the stock. So on the eve of this big breakup, let's take a closer look with Klaus Kleinfeld, the current chairman and CEO of Alcoa, who'll be taking the helm at Arconic tomorrow after the split. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Good oh, to see you, Klaus. Have a seat. Good to see you. Okay. Good to see you. Klaus, I don't know if you uh, agree with that characterization, but I look at the company as primarily aerospace and some auto and then a couple of other things. But True. Uh, the aerospace cycle we heard from Boeing is very strong and we know from United Technologies is strong. Where does uh, Arconic play in the cycle? Well, we are playing on the air aircrafts, you know, on the plane structures. I mean, this wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for aluminum. 90% of all aluminum alloys that ever flew in the West had been invented by Alcoa, right? Okay. And now we also play very, very strong on the, uh, on the aero engine. Right, 90% of the components in the engine we are making now. And this is something that we've built up over the last years. Now, uh, there are many different plane companies. Are you agnostic about which company? Absolutely. We are totally agnostic of it. I mean, pretty much we work with everybody who's building planes and we work with everybody who's building engines. Where are we in the cycle? Some people say that if you're in wide body, it's not so good. I know that you had talked about teething in certain places. True. Uh, where are we in the, uh, say, long and short term in terms of demand? The order book is nine years long. I don't know how many industries you know that have an order book that's nine years long. I, I don't remember anyone, you know? Okay. So that's the situation. Why is that so? A lot is driven by middle class growth. I mean, every year about 100 million new passengers are added in Asia alone, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing that's a big driver is the new planes have a 20% energy efficiency. 15 percentage points of this come from the jet engine. So there's a lot going on in terms of innovation and we are very happy to supply us to this industry. Okay, how about the auto and truck side? Auto, very interesting, particularly here in North America. Mm -hmm. Ford F-150, all aluminum car, big success. Now the Super Duty 250, 350, also all aluminum, very, very good. Aluminum is finding its way and light weighting all cars in the US as well as elsewhere. Do you have to worry, uh, Ford has been saying there's a little bit of an inventory backup. Well, look, I mean, uh, this, is, this has been boom times again, fortunately. Right. I mean, it's been back to uh, the pre-crisis level. It's plateauing on a high level. So, I mean, uh, the passenger cars show some weakness, you know, so that's, right. that's probably what's going on there. Commercial, commercial trucks, not so good in the yeah. U.S. Not so good in the U.S. So do we have to worry about that in terms of the, the way we look at it? Or is that because I know that most of the business of Arconic is secular growth. There's some cyclical. In, in terms of the cyclical, there's some, it's uneven. Well, 65% we call secular and secular businesses, but most of these secular businesses, I mean, 40% of this is aerospace alone. Right. We talked about it, right? Then you talk about auto. I, I think auto is going to plateau on a high level. Mm -hmm. Aluminization, however, is going to continue. Light weighting is going to continue. This Percentage is good for us. of, of, of for us, vehicles right? that will yeah, take Exactly, work. that will lightweight and for emissions re reasons, you know, that's all good for right. us, you know? Now, will Arconic look like Arconic a few <laughs> years from now? In other words, are there still divisions that you don't want? because there's some competition. For instance, in, in some of the engineered products, there isn't enough engineering to really justify owning it. It's just not as high. Uh, the propensity is, is, is it's, it's, it's not as proprietary. Yeah, well, you know where we came from and, right. and where You've we are. You've gotten rid of others before. We, 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 where, we were, where we are now. I mean, we are now in a lot of very complicated things. Right. When you look at an aero, aero engine, all these parts, very complicated. Right. And there's a lot of continuous uh, innovation potential in the aircraft also. We are strong not only on metallic planes. We are also strong on composite planes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we expanded in our portfolio. We now have fasteners. We have some fasteners that are unique in this because they can guide lightning strikes through a wing without sparking. That's very healthy right. if you are a passenger. How many equipment, fasteners right? in a typical, say, 737? Oh, a lot, a lot. A I mean, million? It, it, no, not, not up to a million. Yeah. But it's interestingly, I mean, one of the largest chipsets for us in total is on the 787, which is a full composite plane. Okay. Titanium, we expanded into titanium. Right. If you look at our portfolio today, Arconic is really, I would say, almost material agnostic. I mean, we have right. titanium, nickel, as well as aluminum. That's, by the way, also why we're changing the name. We love yeah. Alcoa, the brand name, but it's so strongly associated with aluminum and commodities, and okay. that's not what we are. Two things I'm concerned about, pension obligations and debt side. They both seem large to me versus the average company I follow. Well, they are large. Uh, so so uh, on, the, on the debt side, um, we will bring the debt down. How? I mean, 
um, through a couple of things. One is uh, the separation comes at a point in time when the commodity prices are very low, lower than what we originally right. had thought, right? So the debt carrying capability of Alcoa Corporation, which is the upstream side, yeah, is limited. So we are taking on some debt of that because we have no other choice if we want to make right. the separation. But we found this instrument of retaining 19.9% .9 of uh, the, their stock. The idea of that 19.9% is to monetize that and use it to pay down debt. So that's the idea about So this. you'll be able to float that stock after a certain period? We'll be able to sell it after a okay. certain period. And if we sell it after 18 months and use it to pay down debt, it's going to be tax-free. The and total time we have five years. Okay, and pension? Pension, we're going to work on the pension, bringing it down. I mean, the pension is a function of basically being a 128-year-old company. Right. Right. So that's what pretty much everybody has. And the second point is the low interest rate. Right. You know, you can't, you can't have it all, but uh, we have some ideas we will continue to but work on. But is the plan to take excess cash and pay these things down before you go buy anything more? Well, uh, I think you have to look at what br brings the better returns, you know. So uh, we look at the return um, profile of these things, you know, and, and, and decide whenever they are in front of us. I mean, theoretical, uh, this is not a theoretical, theoretical discussion. It has to be a practical But one. obviously the goal is not to have a high dividend. I mean, the goal is to be a growth company that, that is not that is not too laden with that. That's correct. At the same time, we feel that we want to pay a dividend uh, continuously, as we've done even through right. the worst of all times with Alcoa. Excellent. Thank you so much to Klaus Kleinfeld. Now, remember, tomorrow he becomes the chairman and CEO of Arconic. That's a new and different and separate company. Mad Money's back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.